On today's episode of RC Kicks, we're finishing up this, the TXT2 Agrius 4x4 Monster Truck. So stay tuned for that one. Hi and welcome to RC Kicks on today's show where we're finally finishing up this massive TXT2 monster truck Agris. Um, there's a few things that were left out from the last video, I'll put a link up here, go check that out. If you haven't seen those, you need to watch those before you come to this one. There was the bearing issue where I'd run out of bearings, well I now have them, they've arrived. So today I've got to swap out some bearings. Most of them are in the wheels, which is super easy, but two of them are in the front axle. So that's going to be a bit of a pain, but I'll do that while the paint is drying. Other things that have arrived, my electronic speed controller, I've got an 880 from Hobbywing, big fan of Hobbywing, um, good quality. So that is gonna drive, this is a electronic uh, speed controller that drives two brushed motors, which is what I now have. I'm using these mega motors, which are the uh, 360 monster truck motors. Now I got given one of these by a viewer, I forget his name now, sorry. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to put two of these in the car. Now these are vintage, so they can be quite expensive, but depending on the quality dictates the price. Now being that I want to run this, I wanted ones that I'm not gonna pay a premium for, that are mint, and then I put them in this, and then I slowly run them down in quality wise. So uh, I was looking around for another one that had been used so I wouldn't pay loads of money. Well, one popped up quite cheap, so I jumped on it and I bought it and I thought, oh, well, quality wise, it's fine. It will be what I needed. And it turned up uh, the day before Christmas and it's mint, brand new, never used. That never happens to me normally. <laughs> so I got a brand new motor for very, very cheap. So it's a bit of a shame to put it in here, but I already have a mint in box one of these, so these should be really cool in this car, so hey, I'll do it anyway. Right, so what's next? Well, the color. It's supposed to be black on the front and red on the back, but I've decided to mix it up, and I did see someone did the same thing online, and it looked much better to me. So I'm gonna use PS16, which is my favorite blue metallic color from Tamiya, and the front is gonna be blue, and then the back is gonna be red like it's supposed to be on the box art. Now there's one little problem, and that is I only have PS2 red, which is not a metallic, and it should be PS16, I think it is. So my plan is this. I'm going to use a bit of PS58, which is pole clear, to spray two layers first before I lay down the red. So hopefully that will give it a bit of a sheen and to make it look a bit more metallic. So that's the plan. Hopefully that'll work out all right, but if I have to wait for the red to arrive, it'll probably take another God knows how long. So I'm fine with that, it should be okay. I did think about just doing it plain red because that is a nice red. It's just being a red, flat red next to a metallic. So I'll just lay down a little bit of pole and that should make it pop a little bit. So we're going with that. Um, I have also ordered some tires for a club buster. So I'm now on the hunt for some rims. I have seen some pictures of this car with the clod wheels and it looks so much better. So that's what's gonna happen. And then I don't, I'm not sure what I'll do with these wheels and tires. I don't know, I'll probably sell them, I guess. Or just keep them in the box in case I want to restore it back to how it should be. Right, I think that's covered everything. Um, so first we've got to cut out the body and then we've got to clean it. And then we've got to put the window decals in. Um, I've got the stickers here, quite a few stickers. I've got some window masks, which is good. So I've got to cut those out. So it's a bit of a mission to try and do the body and fit the electronics and fix the bearing issue. So it's a big day today, there's lots to do. So I better shut up and just get on with it. Right, let's crack on. Well, for some stupid reason, I decided to make a bit more effort. So what I've actually done is masked off the actual roll bars in the back. 
and I'm going to do what I did on my uh, Dyna Blaster and I'm actually going to paint in the bars like that. So of course it's taken me hours to do it as this is more complicated than that one. So uh, yeah, so it's all ready to spray the black which is this section here. Um, I've sanded around the edges of the body and everything so let's spray this black. After the black I have to peel off this section, I have to mask it up again, then we'll spray some um, smoke into the corners and then we'll spray the, the bars silver to try and give it a bit of a 3D look. Yeah, things I do, eh? But the body's pretty cool, so it's probably worth it. Right, let's spray the black up and see what kind of results we get. So I've put three layers of black on there and in true form for UK weather, it started raining. So while that's drying off, I think what we'll do is turn our attentions to swapping out the brass bushes that are in the front axle and on all the wheels. Um, the bearings arrived so they can go in. So it's a bit of a faff. The wheels aren't too bad, but taking out the whole axle takes a little bit of effort. So let's crack on and get that done while that's drying. So that's all the bearings swapped over in the axle. It wasn't so bad getting the front axle out. I thought it was going to be a bit more of a challenge. The um, Juggernaut 2, that one seems to be a little bit more complicated around the front end. It's more simplified on this and I didn't have to take the servo section out. I could just release the whole thing and then drop the axle out. So that wasn't too bad and then just do the bearings at the same time. But it does make such a difference to run how smooth they are now. Um, so you definitely want to fit full bearings. Yes, it might cost you quite a bit of money, but uh, for these big trucks, definitely. Even though it seems to use hundreds of the damn things. Right, what's next? Now it's still just sort of stopping raining. So what we're gonna do next is I'm probably going to unpeel all the bar uh, masking so that we can spray it in silver. And then while that's drying, we'll look at fitting the motors. Now I need to fit connectors to both motors, so I'll have to solder those up. So let's do this bar work first, and then we'll come back to do soldering up the motors. Lots to do today. Now, if you haven't tried soldering, give it a go. It's not that difficult and it's also not that expensive. I like to have the motors with connectors on them because I swap motors in and out of different cars all the time. So it just makes life easier to use Dean's connectors. I wasn't sure how hard these motors were gonna make the ESC work. So I attached the optional fan. Gaining access to the motor mounts was a little bit difficult. You had to remove the crossbar and by disconnecting the shocks, you could lift it up to get your arm in. Well, we've been moving along. I fitted the two motors. Now that was a bit of a challenge because you have the gear in the middle and then you have the two pinion gears and they have to mesh with one gear in the middle. And the good thing is that once you've built the kit, you can't see it. You have to take it out and adjust it. But you can take out the center gear and then put it in and then try and adjust it. But when you put it all back together again, it's never exactly right. So I did it all, put it all back together and it was too tight. Dismantled it again 
and uh, loosened it as a bit more. Now I think I might be fractionally still a bit tight, but uh, everything's now working. I fitted the electronics, loads of soldering because I wanted to have the motors so I could disconnect them and use them on other things and stuff like that at some point. So I've soldered up some Dean's connectors onto the motors, Dean's connector onto the ESC because I want to run 2S LiPo in it. And then I've set up the receiver and the channel. So I now have dual steering and then I have drive. I need to set up the braking because the braking feels too strong. But this is a brand new electronic speed controller so it will be set to its defaults. I like it to run on a little bit because the big tires and the friction on the ground, they stop quite quickly. So I like to have it a bit to less brake on the big monster trucks. But it's all working. I haven't set the end points for the steering, but uh, that's as far as we've got. Now on the body side of it, let me just disconnect this. Uh, on the body side, I've been kind of doing a bit, but the rain has stopped play. So now I've painted all the black and peeled off all the masking tape for the actual roll bar section. And then I've been spraying them in with a bit of uh, smoke. Now my plan is there's a couple of little mistakes I need to get rid of. But my plan is then to get some polycarbonate cleaner and a cotton bud. And I'm basically going to clean out the center sections of the bars. So what I should end up with is the smoke should be just on the joints. Then if I leave it for a while, then I spray it with uh, silver. Hopefully there should be what looks like shading on the bars. But there's two little blobs that I need to get rid of. Um, that when I was spraying the smoke, I got some blobs, so I need to get rid of those. But that's coming as well. So the body sort of stalled out a little bit, mainly because the weather's so rubbish. But we managed to crack on. All the bearings are done, so the actual chassis is pretty much finished now. I've got to do a bit of a test run, which we'll do in a little while, but it's now dark, so I'll do that tomorrow. But uh, it's much smoother with all the bearings in. So let's carry on with the body and clear up this mess. One hop up option I'd like to do in the future is to remove the chassis plates that you see here and replace them with carbon fiber or see-through polycarbonate. Right, for you it is instantaneous, but for me it's yet another day. This project is taking quite a while. It's about three, four days through the, from start to finish. So what have I done since uh, I last talked to you, which was about 10 seconds ago, <laughs> well, but another day for me. Well, I put the stickers on the side of the chassis. I cleaned up the wheels with some lubricant cleaner because the fixing agent on them was really, really bad. I will do that once more, but uh, they're looking a bit more normal. Um, yes, I know you can use a uh, heating thing, but uh, for the sake of just spraying on some lubricant cleaner, that's good enough for me. Um, I dialed in the electronic speed controller, but I want to tweak it again a little bit. I want to dial down the throttle a bit because it's very punchy and it puts a lot of stress on the car. So uh, I'll bring that down a little bit. I went a bit too high on the settings for that. Uh, apart from that, the chassis is now pretty much finished. Body wise, um, I've now sprayed in the sort of chassis bars, if you will. So that's all done. Uh, I'll put a bit of shading in there as well on it. Very basic, obviously. So I'm just letting that dry. Then we'll take off all the masking. Then I'm going to mask up the front so we can spray the back red. And then uh, I'll take that off. Then I'll put the window mask in and we'll blow in the blue. And then after that, I'll gun metal the whole lot and it should be done. Then we can get on with the decals. So let's keep going. So I've now masked up the body for the next color, which is the red. Unfortunately, I don't have this metallic red. So I'm going to improvise a little bit. I'm going to use some Pearl Clear, which is PS58. Blow in two sets of that, two layers of that. And then I'm going to back it in red, which is standard PS2 red, because all the front's going to be metallic blue. So I'm going to try that to see how that pans out. Bit of an experiment as well to see. Uh, I'm trying a few sort of strange little bits and pieces. Again, I tried something different with the bars as well. That came out okay, but I think I would adjust it a little bit different. But uh, I kind of liked how it worked. 
Right, wish me luck. This could go really well, or it could be a total <laughs> But we'll find out. I do these things for you. <laughs> yeah, I just forgot to buy the metallic red. Sorry about that. Um, one thing you have to remember is that I am filming and I'm running to a schedule and I have things going on. So when people say, oh, you should have known that, don't forget I've got a lot of kits backed up and I've got kits coming and going and bearings I buy in bulk and stuff like that because I'm doing this as a job, not just sitting there on my own doing one kit every now and again. So uh, you'll have to forgive me if I don't have every single thing right for every single build, but hey, I'm only human and I'm just trying to produce some content for you. Right, let's carry on. I don't normally cut all the decals out in one go before fitting them to the body, but because time is ticking and this project is taking longer than I expected, I decided to cut them all out while I was waiting for paint to dry. So the red is now down, it's three coats of red, but it is quite transparent. So the idea is you then back it in white, which is PS1. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna now go over all the red areas in white that will really make it vibrant and pop. I honestly don't know whether the pearl worked or not until I take off the uh, protective cover. So after the white, we've got to peel off all the remaining masking tape fit the window masks and then we'll blow that in in blue. I've finished cutting out all the decals so they're just waiting now. Right, let's back it in white. It only takes about two coats of white to finish that off and then we can do the blue and then hopefully we can finally get to put the decals on and call this one done. As this is a monster truck build, I thought it was in keeping to have some heavy metal to go with it even though I can't stand heavy metal music. So I hope you appreciate it. And another stage is reached. I've removed all the front masking and I've put the window masks in after cutting them out. For some weird reason, Tamir only give you three when actually there is five windows. So I had to make two window masks myself. Very simple, you take your masking tape, you stick it on the outside, you draw around it, then you cut it out and you stick it on the opposite side. So it wasn't that much of a difficult issue. It's just a bit strange how you get three but not the two back ones. And also leaving those to be blue would look really weird or doing them in black again it should just be see-through i will do some smoke in the windows as well and you do get some anti um like anti roll bar uh roll cage sorry you get roll cage stickers but i'm thinking it'd be better to actually put a roll cage in it but we'll see that'll be in another video for sure i don't have enough time to do that right now so we're going to paint it all in blue which is ps16 then after i've done three layers of the ps16 i will back it in white because i want it to be vibrant and then we'll do a gum metal gray two coat finish just to make it look a bit more professional um, the red went on fine no issues there i still don't know how much of the pole is going to show through um, i've got a bit of overspray here but that's on the outside so that will disappear once i peel off the protective film now the red didn't react at all so i'm quite happy with that so let's put down three coats of blue fingers crossed and hopefully we can get this done i've got a few more hours before i need to edit up this video so we better get a move on it's probably safe to say that the biggest challenge for most people when building these kits is the painting. I get asked a lot of questions about painting and what's the secret. And the secret is this, attention to detail, take your time and be very accurate with your masking. Applying thin coats, don't go too heavy, will give you the results you're looking for. So I've just finished the last blue, but it's got to dry before we back it in white and then take the window mask out and then we've got to do smoke in the windows. It's coming along, no issues with reaction problems or anything like that, so I'm really chuffed. But it's getting dark, so I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut to a little bit of running footage of the chassis out and about, because I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it in this video with all the body finished. So let's just jump outside and I'll show you what it's capable of in its stock form, apart from some decent upgraded motors.
really impressed with the stock steering in this kit it's way better than the clod ever was I think you can agree it's got plenty of grunt. If anything, I think I've nailed it. it uh, the amount of power I have makes the chassis come alive, but it's not too much to keep flipping it over. Now, when I put different wheels and tires, when I put the clod wheels and tires on this, it will be slightly wider. So it should help even more, but uh, very lively and I'm really happy. I've kept an eye on it and temperatures are nice and cool as well. It is very cold outside, so, but the electronic speed controller seems to handle it no problem at all. Also, I was thinking about putting a BEC in this, <coughs> excuse me, but I looked at the voltage coming requested by the servos and it's matched again perfectly with the uh, electronic speed controller. So I don't need to do that either. Um, it fits my um, two, uh, 3S 11.1 uh, volt uh, battery perfectly and that gives it plenty of juice to bring it to life. So uh, yeah, 3S with two brushed uh, vintage motors Bang on, really happy. Right, where are we at? Well, the body's still drying, but I've managed to finish all the blue now. Next, I'm gonna apply the white and then the gray and then peel the window masks off. Man, there's a lot of steps to painting up a body. Let's carry on. This is where all your hard work starts to pay off. When you start to see just how beautiful the body turned out. Now I have got an airbrush and I will start airbrushing my bodies but the reason I like using the Tamiya spray cans is that's what a lot of people use to paint their bodies. So if I can produce this kind of level with a tin there's no reason why anybody else shouldn't be able to either. So I've done it all in the grey. It still stinks. But after many, many hours, I want to take the cover off, but it smells really bad in here at the moment. So I'm going to put this on and I'm going to take off the protective film because we can put the decals on. And then the last thing to do is to spray the windows with smoke, but I can do that with the decals on. So let's give it a go. So the metallic red trick has worked. It looks really good and quite uniform. So I'm really happy with that. Oh, it stinks. Tiny bit of overspray there. I can see one tiny little bit of overspray, but apart from that, it's looking good. Right, let's get putting the decals on. I think going for the lovely Tamiya Blue was definitely the way to go as the car is so vibrant and it just pops with the decals versus the black all across the front.
After many hours, I finished it. Do you want to see it? Do you? Well, since you stayed all the way to the end of the video, I've got an extra little surprise for you. Are you ready? Oh, it's good. It's very good. Check this out. I put the clod wheels on it and it is a proper full blown monster truck. So I have these wheels coming, but I've nabbed these off my clod and uh, yeah, she's beautiful. Really, really nice. I'm really happy with it. It's taken hours and hours to paint it up, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I put two layers of um, smoke in the windows. Normally I do three to four because I'm gonna put a roll cage in this and I want to be able to see through the windows. So uh, yeah, so that's what I've done. It came out fine. Some tips for you if you're doing one of these, be very careful about the line where the line goes because you've got two points of issues one up the top here and one inside the sticker so uh, I've had to fettle mine a little bit with some black marker but you can't see it it looks fine so just pay attention to that line I thought you'd have lots of margins but you don't so be very careful the other one I would give you is when you're doing this decal here it just tells you to like go across the end I would spend the time and cut that one in because you can see it's on the shoulder. I may even get a scalpel and cut that out myself and pick it off. Um, that's the only two things. Um, really chuffed, love the blue and it came out really well. The, uh, the back section with the uh, bars and everything that came out okay even though it took me a long time. All the insides done in gunmetal grey pretty decent really happy with it so on another video we're going to put it head to head with the clod so if you haven't please like and subscribe hit that notification bell because you don't want to miss these two classic monster trucks going head to head what do i think compared to the clod it's way more capable out of the box than the clod is and uh, another thing people were telling me is to leave this section in yes definitely leave in this part um, it may adds much more strength to it as well and it looks pretty cool and I think it looks better to be fair than the photos I've seen online doing it in the black um, I'm more happy doing it in the blue even though it was a lot more work because you have to mask off all the black bit then you've got to mask off the blue bit and the red bit and the silver bit and it goes on and on and on but it was well worth it so uh, which is my favorite between the clod and this one? Mm, we'll have to see how it performs, but out of the box, it's definitely better. But with the clod, you have lots of options to upgrade and things like that, um, which kind of brings it up. It's a bit too early for me to tell, but they're very close now between this stock and what I've done to my clod. Well, stay tuned. Thanks very much. Please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel and have loads more content like this, head over to the RC Kicks Patreon page as I'm posting my builds constantly. So if you would like to see this earlier than you are seeing it now and behind the scenes and stuff like that, go check out that. See you on the next one. Whew, that was a long build, but well worth it. Check out one of these videos for some more RC fun.